Hi everyone. Today I am going to make a video on trimming your Sammy's feet. I know that this is definitely something that some people have questions about or struggle with or get nervous about doing it themselves, so I figured I'd make a video on it. I will do my best with the camera angles because I'm controlling the camera myself with a tripod. Um, so definitely uh, bear with me when it comes to that weight. So we have Nimbus here and he is up on the grooming table. He's not super happy because he knows what's going to happen, but for the most part he stands still. If you have a Sammy that's a little bit wigglier, you, it helps to have a grooming table with a grooming arm so that you can secure them in place and you don't have to worry about them moving about too much. I do not have a grooming arm on this because he's usually pretty good about standing still, but he also just heard my husband come home, so that's why he's wiggling around. So anyway, to start off, you can see Nimbus's fur toes aren't too bad, um, but he definitely has some fur uh, going past the pads. And the problem that that presents for us is that we have hardwood floors. So when his fur goes past his pads, it basically turns our house into an ice skating rink for him, which could be pretty dangerous. Like, um, besides, you know, the, the big injuries, like if he ran down the stairs and slid on the floor, he could break a leg. Um, one thing it's definitely done is occasionally he will kind of wrench a leg, not really sprain it, but definitely slide and wrench it. And he's had times where he's slid kind of gone down the stairs too fast and is messed up his shoulder a little bit. So if you have hardwood floors, it definitely is a good idea to keep the hair on the bottom of your Sammy's feet short. Um, and the last time he had his feet trimmed was right before a show, which I believe was last month. And so, yeah, you know, Sammy's pad fur does grow pretty fast, so it's a good idea to keep it trimmed regularly. Stand. And then you can see in the front of his toes, he has what we like to refer to as Grinch toes because the hair is growing past his toes and past his nails. So we're gonna trim that as well and give him a nice tidy foot. So the first thing that I like to do, sorry, forgive me with the camera here. Stop moving to this stand. So the first thing that I like to do when it comes to trimming feet is to trim the nails. And if you look at his nails, they're probably longer than I'd like in general. And if you have an issue with your Sammy's quick, which is the pink vein inside the nail being long so that you can't trim them very much, the trick to getting that to recede is to actually trim your dog's nails more often. And even if it's just a tiny sliver taken off once a week, that will stimulate the quick to recede. Um, or even using a nail file on it every couple of days. You don't really have to take much off. You're just stimulating that quick to move backwards and get shorter so that you can get your dog's nails shorter. And also frequent walks on cement helps do the same thing. Um, so let me show you how I trim nails. So I lift the foot backwards. Now, if you have a dog that is wiggly or likes to pull his foot, the trick to making that easier on yourself is to lift their paw up backwards. And you keep the leg close to the body. Never pull a dog's shoulder out towards you because that could injure them, and it, especially if they're pulling against you. So you keep their leg very close to their body and you lift their foot up backwards. Kind of like how a farrier would shoe a horse because when it's backwards like that, they cannot tug and pull away from you. So you want to pull that hair back and you're going to look for the quick and you can also kind of see where it ends underneath the nail. Wait. And you're going to just give it a little snip. Now quicking a dog, which is when you nick that vein inside, it happens. You know, it's, it's lucky that for the most part, <coughs> oh stop, for the most part, Sammy's have clear nails. Now, as you can see, I didn't quick him and he still whimpered. He was not hurt. He just did not want this to happen. He's kind of a big baby and that's okay. Just don't let it startle you because if you let it startle you, 
you could actually hurt the dog. And so, as I was saying, clicking does happen, and you know, it's not very nice. It scares you, it scares the dogs, but it does happen. So, when you are trimming nails, it's a good idea to have some styptic powder on the side, and that's just a coagulant. You dip the end of the nail on it, the bleeding stops, and they'll be okay. So, the next step is going to be the actual shaving of the bottom of the paw. Now, here's the tools that I use when I'm trimming feet. I have a cordless trimmer. You can definitely use a corded one. Um, it makes it a little bit more unwieldy. I find that blades tend to heat up a little bit faster. This Arco, uh, or I mean, sorry, this uh, Wall Arco is really not that expensive on Amazon. It's probably about $120, which yes, you know, that's pricey, but they do last a long time. Um, and this one has two rechargeable batteries that come with it, so it's pretty nice. And then I have curve shears and thinning shears. So these particular ones are shark fin brand. You definitely don't need some that are quite this high end. These came with me from when I was a dog groomer. So we are going to start with our trimmers. Now I push the furnishings up because you don't want to trim those, but I do pull the hair that's right next to the pad down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shave what comes over the back of the pad because that's what could potentially come down and cause them to slip. And I'm just going to go backwards towards my thumb. Now, when you're generally when you're shaving or using clippers, you got to you need to hold it at the angle of the bottom of the blade here. So, you want this part of the blade and as you can see, I'm holding my finger against it and it's on and it's not cutting me. You want this part of the blade to be flat against the skin. And that's how you're going to shave safely. And little scooping motions help in the foot. And then we are going to stop. We're going to do the rest of the bottom of the foot. And as you can see, I'm holding his foot backwards the same way that I did the nails because it's much harder for him to pull away. Nimbus is also trained to lay down on his side for me to do his feet. And that works pretty good too, if you have a dog that'll lay there for you. And that's kind of one of the reasons why he's acting up. He's not used to having to stand on a grooming table for this, which, you know, isn't necessarily the best habit, but it's worked out for us. Now, when I get close to the nails, I kind of ditch down underneath the nail with really gentle scooping motions. Now, this time of year, I am just shaving this hair so that it's going to be flat and flush to his paw pads. If it is a particularly muddy time of year, or if you have found that during the winter you have issues with snow accumulating in the bottom of the foot. Now this, this hair in here protects the foot. And the other thing to mention is that between these paw pads are raised areas of skin. So you need to be very careful with that. And Sammy's have very thick hair between their paws and that's what protects them from snow. If you don't live in the snowy area or you have issues with a lot of mud accumulating between the toes, which could cause problems with skin, then it's perfectly fine to go between the paw pads and get that hair out. And what you do is you go down from the back of the toe and do a gentle scooping motion towards that back pad. And like I said, you need to be careful because there are flaps of skin sometimes for some dogs that are raised up and you can nick those. Stop. So I'm just going to keep doing this and then sometimes what I'll do is I'll go between the pads and I'll use my fingers, stop, to pull up any extra hair. Stop. Stand. You don't need to lick your pasta. Stop. Stop. <laughs> so what we've got here now is as you can see, that nice thick protective hair is still there between the toes, but it's flush now to the paw pads. 
so that he's not going to slide around in the house. So the next part that we're going to do are these fluffy little Grinch toes. Sorry for the camera. So another tool that's very useful and you're going to need for doing these toes is a slicker brush. Now, with a Sammy, especially if you are showing a Sammy, it's important that you don't take off too much hair. You don't want this hair to look choppy, you don't want it to look shaved, um, and you generally don't want the nails to show. So the, the goal is to have a tidy foot um, without taking too much off. And the other thing that's important that I've seen in the show ring um, is you don't want to try and make this foot look rounded. Sammy's are not golden retrievers. You don't want a cat foot. Um, Sammy's have a hair foot, which means that these two front toes are longer than the two side toes. And you want that to be apparent, especially in the show ring. You want to show that they have correct feet per the standard. So... <laughs> So, yep, we've got his little grinchy toes. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this, and when he's not showing, I do it kind of the easy way, and I'm gonna show you what that is. So the first thing you actually wanna do is you wanna brush this hair up, and what that's gonna do for you is it's gonna show you the difference in length between that long toe hair and the correct length hair on the top of the foot. Now, I could just take my shears to that, but the kind of quick way is to take my clippers. And no, I'm not gonna shave his entire foot, but what I am gonna do is I'm going to skim, skim over the correct length hairs, and I can just take those top hairs off. And I go up towards the leg, just very gently. And as you can see, that's already cleaned them up quite a bit. And I will even take my clippers and trim the ends here. And honestly, like that'll be a quick and easy way to do it. But obviously I don't wanna finish with that because I wanna show you how we do it with thinning shears. So when I'm doing it with scissors, what I will usually start with is I will bring the foot, that back foot back around. Stop, turn, 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 turn. I will bring that foot back around. Let me move the camera and take this off. Okay, so I will bring that foot back under and what I'm looking for here, you gotta move all these furnishings away, is any hair that when I cut my hand under his toe or under his feet, is any hairs that go past the pads of the feet around the sides and the front and this is how you take the first bulk off. I'm going to trim the hair with my curves that goes past the edge of the foot. And now you need to be very careful with your shears and you need to be watching the entire length of shears or you could actually take some of the paw pad off and you definitely don't want to do that. So now the reason that I don't use curves for the entire thing is because of what you see now is that they've made kind of a very harsh line. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna smooth that out with our thinners to make it look nice and natural. So I take my slicker brush and I brush up back toward the leg to make all that hair stand up right. And I'm gonna take my blending or thinning shears and I am just going to make it nice and natural by trimming the hair that is above the correct length natural short hair. <laughs> He's making this hard on me by putting all his weight on me while I'm holding his foot up. And now it's very, so people who haven't necessarily been trained in scissors, one of the mistakes that you make 
is by bouncing the shears. And if you're bouncing the shears when you trim, you're not gonna get a nice even length. So you want to have, stop. I guess it's your ring finger in the bottom hole. And you don't want it all the way in like you're using kitchen shears. You want just up to your first knuckle and your, your thumb should just have the tip of it in the top hole. And when you, sh when you trim, only technically your top, your thumb should move. And that'll help you stay nice and smooth. Stop. Stand, stand. And so when you're going along the foot, you try and keep it nice and smooth without bouncing. And you can just do a little at a time. Like this doesn't have to be a fast process. You can always take more off. You can't add it back on, especially right before a dog show. And then once I think I've got enough off, I have him put his foot down and I make him stand square. This is important because if he's not standing correctly, you don't know how the foot's standing. So that is actually not terrible. But what we're gonna do now is brush it while he's standing. And I know it's tempting to always use your fingers, but you're not gonna get the hair to all go correctly if you use your fingers. And also, especially if you are about, if you're grooming this dog for the show ring, if you use your fingers when grooming them, you're getting your oils, your hand oils on the fur, which is going to make it dirty because hand oils will collect dirt and also make the hair not stand up white and fluffy. So as you can see, even though his foot's nice and tidy now, you still can't see those nails. And what I'm going to do now is I am going to look, let's see, I don't know if I can get the, the phone to show this correctly, but I'm gonna look along the sides and the bottom with his foot standing up. I am just going to use the scissors to make sure that there's not too much hair down by the floor. Now, if your dog keeps pulling his foot away when you're trying to get his foot to stand correctly, the trick to fix that is to pick up the other foot. If you have this foot up in the air, he can't lift that foot that's on the table because he will fall. So now that foot is staying on the ground. I'm gonna give it a nice trim, not exposing the nails. I'm gonna go around to the other side. And I'm gonna check this side. And then the last thing I'm gonna check is that there's no hair touching the ground along the back. Now, if I was doing this for a show, I'd probably have even more attention to detail and I'd check his furnishings and make sure that those were even. But, you know, you want your Sammy especially in the show ring, to be tidy, to look groomed, but you don't want them to look overgroomed. groomed Sammy is supposed to be a natural breed, but natural breed does not mean untidy and dirty. So that is basically how you trim a Sammy foot. And I'm sorry that this is so long. Um, I will maybe try to make a shorter one, uh, but if anybody has any questions, definitely feel free to ask.